All right, guys, the doctoral degree tier list 2021 version. I am going to be doing this one super fast. There have been some updates since last year. I got to go to bed here in about 20 minutes or so. So I'm going to get this one done extremely quickly. Uh, we're starting the list off right away. Uh, acupuncturist, this can include any type of like natural medicine doctor or naturopath, etc. This one is going to go into F tier. Architect at the doctoral level, this one does have some pretty good career prospects. Architecture is also really cool. This one goes into B tier. Art uh, at the uh, doctoral level, unless you're like an absolute freak of nature, someone who's, you know, like a Mozart from a young age, you had just unnatural talent, you're like in the 99.9th percentile, playing like classical guitar or piano or something along those lines, this one is not going to be worth it. It's going to go into F tier. And by the way, guys, I've made lots of other videos explaining the statistics behind this and, and why, you know, I rank things in certain ways. And usually it has to do with pay, job outlook, job satisfaction, etc. You can check out my other videos if you're curious about that. I'm not going to get into the numbers in this video. Next on the list is going to be chiropractor. Uh, this is one where there's tons of schools out there. A lot of them are pretty scammy in my opinion. They're basically just chiropractor mills. They will charge you a ridiculous amount of money. However, if you can get a job as a chiropractor, you know, preferably open your own business, you can make decent money. I'm actually pretty close friends uh, with, uh, or at least they're like a family friend uh, of somebody who is a chiropractor and he makes really good money but not the best one. Uh, the debt to income ratio is awful here. It's 4.9, which is the worst on the entire list. This one goes into D tier. Next one on the list is going to be dentist. Now, this is one where it can be worth it. A lot of the time you're gonna end up being in debt until you know late in your life. So for me personally, I would not want to go down this route. However, if you're okay with going to school for a bunch of years, getting like, you know, $300,000, $400,000 in debt a lot of the time, and then being able to pay that off uh, by the time you're maybe 40 or something like that, then this one is uh, gonna be great for you if you can uh, go into it for the long haul. This one goes into A tier. Next one on the list is going to be lawyer. Now, this is one that used to be absolutely fantastic, one of the best careers out there. I think that just because of all the hype, uh, tons of people went into it. You know, it's always like, oh, you have to become a lawyer, or a doctor, or an engineer. Well, lawyer is the one that got saturated the most out of those three, but it can still be viable if you know what you're doing. Now, uh, this is one where, you know, there's literally like a song they made about it called Don't Be a Lawyer, Don't Become a Lawyer. Um, I talked about that in my video on the channel uh, talking about, you know, whether or not you should become a lawyer. It is kind of a high risk, high reward type of degree and career. But with that being said, this one is going to go into C tier. Next on the list is going to be optometrist. This is one that I'm actually a little bit bullish on. I'm um, I'm going to put it into C tier this time, but I think in the near future, just because of the fact that so many people are staring at screens all the time, uh, eyes are just going to get worse and worse, uh, <laughs> like mine, for instance. And for that reason, um, I see this one becoming, uh, you know, there's just needing more and more optometrists in the world. Um, so I'm going to put it in C tier, but uh, I could see it rising up the ranks. All right, next one is going to be a dental specialist like orthodontist, endodontist, and periodontist. You can make a ton of money becoming an orthodontist, especially if you open your own practice. It is a huge time commitment, but most of the ones on this list, of course, they're doctoral degrees, so they are also going to be pretty big time commitments. Um, but this one is going to go into A tier. Next on the list is going to be pharmacist. This one has a debt to income ratio of 2.2, which is one of the lowest on the list. This is one where I'm a pharmacist myself. I was able to get my degree in five years and nine months, right? So technically, you know, a lot of doctorate degrees, people think of them as like eight years, but with PhDs, a lot of the time they're gonna take 10 to 12 years. With some of the other ones, they're gonna take around 10 years as well. And that's not counting residencies if you go into the medical fields. But with that being said, when it comes to how much you make versus the time and all things being equal, pharmacist is a pretty decent option. This one is going into A tier. Next on the list is going to be physical therapist. This is one that has a very high job satisfaction score. Doesn't make as much as a lot of the other ones on this list. The numbers definitely don't pop out by any means. 
Um, however, the debt to income is about 2.5, not too bad. This one is going to go into C tier. Next is going to be a psychologist at the doctoral level. This is the one where a lot of people end up going for this when they get a psychology degree because most of the good jobs are going to be at the graduate level. The debt to income ratio here is 3.2 to one, starting to get on the higher side, but still not horrible. This one is going to go into C tier, it's barely gonna make it into C tier. Next on the list is a science PhD. This is somebody who gets a PhD in a science type degree, like for instance, chemistry, biochemistry, biology, etc. And this is a really cool one because you can make some huge breakthroughs getting a PhD in science. Especially at the PhD level, you have the opportunity to really change the world. Um, in terms of pay, it's pretty decent, not amazing, but at the doctoral level, science PhDs are actually pretty good. This one is going into B tier. Next on the list is going to be social science, humanities, and liberal arts majors uh, at the doctoral level. Now with a lot of these majors, there's pretty much just like no jobs at the bachelor level or very few jobs that have anything to do with the actual subject. Sometimes there'll be jobs at the master's level and then a lot of the time you have to go to the doctoral level before you find good career jobs. But with that being said, if you are able to get up to that high level, which a lot of the time with these uh, types of degrees, it actually takes much longer to do your PhD than say if you got a mathematics PhD. So this one is going to go into D tier. Next on the list is going to be an education or teaching degree at the doctoral level. Now they have a debt to income ratio around 2.5 to one, so it's not super expensive. A lot of the time you're going to be able to get a stipend, get it paid for, but you're also not going to be making a ton of money for somebody who has a doctorate. But if you're able to do it, it's not too bad. It doesn't jump off the page at you. Um, this one is going into C tier. Next on the list is going to be TIM degrees, right? So not STEM, but TIM, technology, engineering, and mathematics. These degrees at the doctoral level are actually quite good. One of the weaknesses with STEM degrees and TIM degrees um, is a lot of the time, you know, there's not as many jobs with the bachelor's, sometimes you have to get a master's, but if you get up to that doctoral level, there's going to be a ton of jobs out there for you. And a lot of them are going to be relatively high paying as well. So this one, is gonna go into S tier. Not my cup of tea personally, I don't, would never get a PhD, that's just way too long, way too much time commitment for me, but for the right person, this can be a great one. Next on the list is going to be veterinarian. This is one where obviously a lot of people wanna get into it, people love their animals. Debt to income ratio is about 3.1, so it's getting a little high. You make decent money, um, has pretty good job satisfaction, decent amount of jobs out there as well, uh, it just doesn't really pop off the page again, so this one is going into C tier. It's viable for the right person, but if you're being fair here, looking at things objectively, uh, the numbers are not amazing. And then the last on the list is going to be medical doctor, and this is one where you make amazing money. It's also incredibly competitive. I made an entire video about kind of the downsides of becoming a medical doctor, just because of the fact that when I was an undergrad, it seemed like everyone was pre-med. Everybody wanted to become a medical doctor, and the truth is, it's great for a certain type of personality, but it's definitely not for everyone. For instance, me, no way I would want to do, you know, eight years of schooling and then another like four to seven years of residency and then maybe like another one to two years of fellowship uh, and before I start working, right? Absolutely not, no way. But for the right person uh, who has the aptitude for it and really wants to do it, this can be fantastic. This one goes into S tier. Check out my other videos right here. I made them just for you. Go ahead, tap that like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, etc. And I will see you guys next time.